Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. President Obama has issued his strongest statement to date in favor of a free and open Internet. In a video message, Obama called for the Federal Communications Commission to uphold the principle of net neutrality by classifying the Internet as a public utility. He said such protections would prevent Internet service providers, or ISPs like Comcast, from blocking access to websites, slowing down content or providing paid fast lanes for Internet service. Cable companies can't decide which online stores you can shop at or which streaming services you can use. And they can't let any company pay for priority over its competitors. To put these protections in place, I'm asking the FCC to reclassify Internet service under Title II of a law known as the Telecommunications Act. In plain English, I'm asking them to recognize that for most Americans, the Internet has become an essential part of everyday communication and everyday life. Press freedom groups have soundly praised Obama's statement, which bolsters calls by nearly 4 million commenters who have urged the FCC to protect net neutrality. Free Press said in a statement, quote, the president may have saved the Internet at the moment it was in the greatest jeopardy. President Obama's message comes in the wake of nationwide protests after reports the FCC planned to adopt a hybrid model that would apply expanded protections only to the relationship between Internet providers and content firms like Netflix and not to the relationship between providers and users. The FCC is an independent agency, meaning Obama cannot directly control its actions. Obama's appointed chair of the FCC, Tom Wheeler, a former lobbyist for the cell phone and cable industries, says the agency will need more time to craft its new rules. A militant group in Egypt has pledged allegiance to the Islamic State. The declaration by the group Ansar Beit al-Makdi comes amidst rumors over the fate of Islamic State leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Iraq's defense minister has said al-Baghdadi was wounded and his deputy killed by a U.S. airstrike. The Pentagon has not confirmed any details. Iraq War veteran and anti-war activist Thomas Young has died just weeks before his 35th birthday. In 2004, Young was shot and paralyzed in Sadr City, Iraq. Last year, 10 years after the Iraq invasion, Thomas Young announced his intention to take his own life due to immense suffering from his injuries. He wrote a letter to former President George W. Bush and Vice President Dick Cheney, which he read on Democracy Now! My day of breaking is the farming. Yours will come. I hope you be put on trial, but mostly I hope, for your sakes, that you find the moral courage to face what you have done to me and to many, many others who deserve to live. Thomas Young later decided to live, but he died this week at home in Seattle. We'll talk more about Thomas Young after headlines with Phil Donahue, who co-directed a film about Thomas called Body of War. As the United States marks Veterans Day today, the Department of Veterans Affairs has announced it may fire 1,000 staffers amidst a scandal over wait times and health care failures. Newly appointed VA Secretary Bob McDonald said care for veterans has improved. We've developed something we call the Blueprint for Excellence to reestablish VA's leadership in health care. And we've begun what may become the largest restructuring in the department's history. In Nigeria, a suicide bomber disguised as a student has killed nearly 50 boys at a boarding school in the town of Podiskam. The militant group Boko Haram is suspected of carrying out the attack. In India, at least eight women have died and nearly 70 others are hospitalized after receiving sterilization surgeries with infected instruments as part of a government-run program. More than 80 women were reportedly operated on over a six-hour period by a single doctor in the central state of Chhattisgarh. India offers free sterilizations as a way to curb population growth, often giving cash incentives that amount to the equivalent of a week's salary for the poor. Outrage continues in Mexico over the apparent massacre of 43 students by police and a drug gang in the southern state of Guerrero. On Monday, protesters blocked the international airport in the resort city of Acapulco for three hours after clashing with police. 
UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has announced the creation of a panel to investigate deaths and damage at UN facilities during this summer's Israeli assault on Gaza, which killed nearly 2,200 Palestinians, mainly civilian. The inquiry will be led by a former Dutch general. The news comes as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed to wage a crackdown after Palestinians killed an Israeli soldier and a woman in separate attacks in Tel Aviv and the West Bank. In the United States, a leading Palestinian activist has been jailed after she was found guilty of concealing her conviction on bomb charges by an Israeli military court more than 40 years ago. Rasmia Odeh says her confession to the bombings was obtained through torture and sexual assault in Israeli custody. Odeh moved to the United States in 1995 and serves in as an associate director at the Chicago Area Arab American Action Network. Her supporters say she was targeted for prosecution on the immigration charge because of her role as a prominent supporter of Palestinian liberation. Oda has been declared a flight risk and taken into custody ahead of sentencing in March. Her attorneys have vowed to appeal. A New York City doctor who was diagnosed with Ebola after treating patients in Guinea is due to be released from the hospital today after being declared Ebola-free. Dr. Craig Spencer was the city's first and only known case of Ebola. New York City's changing its response to marijuana possession. Police Commissioner William Bratton said instead of being arrested, people caught with small amounts of marijuana may receive a summons to appear in court and pay a fine if found guilty. But Bratton also noted exceptions to the policy. Under the new policy, persons found to be in possession of this amount of marijuana, 25 grams or less, may be eligible to receive a summons in lieu of arrest. So summons instead of being arrested. However, I would point out there are exceptions to the provisions of this new department policy. It should be made very clear that persons who are burning and are smoking marijuana in public will still be subject to, to arrest. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio criticized low-level marijuana arrests during his campaign. But according to the Drug Policy Alliance, police conducted more arrests for marijuana possession from March to August under de Blasio than during the same period the previous year under Mayor Bloomberg. Eighty-six percent of those arrested for marijuana possession in the first eight months of this year were African American or Latino. Imprisoned journalist and former Black Panther Mumia Abu-Jamal has filed a lawsuit challenging a new Pennsylvania law he says violates his free speech. The measure was introduced after Abu Jamal gave a pre-taped commencement address at his alma mater, Vermont's Goddard College. His speech was opposed by Pennsylvania officials and the widow of Daniel Faulkner, the police officer whom Abu Jamal was convicted of killing. The law authorizes the censoring of prisoners' public addresses if judges agree that letting them speak would cause mental anguish to victims. A 30-year-old audio recording has been released publicly for the first time, which shows then-U.S. President Ronald Reagan apologizing to British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher over the U.S. invasion of Grenada. The United States invaded the small Caribbean nation in 1983 after the assassination of leftist President Maurice Bishop. Within months, a pro-U.S. government was installed. While the fighting was still underway, Reagan called Thatcher to apologize for not warning her in advance of his plan to invade Grenada, which is part of the British Commonwealth. If I were there, Margaret, I'd throw my hat in the door before I came in. <laughs> President Reagan went on to apologize for any embarrassment caused to Britain. And three civil rights activists murdered by the Ku Klux Klan in 1964 after traveling to Mississippi to register black voters in the South have been posthumously awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor. The murders of James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Mickey Schwerner shocked the country and propelled the passage of the Voting Rights Act in 1965. Other recipients of this year's Medal of Freedom include Chilean novelist Isabel Allende and Native American activist Suzanne Harjo. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.